we're designed to crave connection. As human beings, our very survival depends on our ability to collaborate with the people around us. So connection is as critical a need as food or shelter. In the same way that we feel cold or hungry if our basic physical needs aren't met, when we can't meet our need for connection, we feel lonely. I like to think of loneliness like, you know those bumpers on the side of the road? The ones where, when you're falling asleep at the wheel and you start drifting closer to the edge, go bum, 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 and wake you up? It's kind of like that. Loneliness is simply a signal that one of the connections that we care about is either blocked, broken, or threatened. When we have the capacity to shift the steering wheel and come back into alignment, when we can reach out and create connection, loneliness isn't actually a problem. But the reality is we are facing a loneliness epidemic. What many people are calling the great public health crisis of our time because it doesn't discriminate. In a sense, we're all at risk. A growing body of research shows that chronic loneliness leads, leaves us anxious, depressed, susceptible to illness, and it actually shortens our lifespan. So the fact that millions of us are struggling with this, it seems like we're kind of stuck on these bumpers trying to, to drive because we don't know how to create the meaningful connection that can bring us back to center. But it's not actually our fault that we don't know. Nobody taught us, and it's never actually been this hard before. Our brains evolved in environments where connection was abundantly available. Pretty much for millennia, we were born and raised in stable communities, embedded in a web of connection without even trying. When everyone you encounter on a daily basis has known you since the day you were born, connection is just a part of the air you breathe. But the implications of this is that we've never had to develop the skills to consciously cultivate creativity. It's like, who needs to learn how to plant an orchard when you live in a tropical rainforest overflowing with fruit? But the world has changed. I'm curious, raise your hand if you were not born in London, if you moved here from someplace else. Wow. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's, mo that's most of us. If you raised your hand, you're among the more than one billion migrants globally. Isn't that amazing? That one out of every seven people on the planet is now, was, was uprooted and replanted somewhere else. This mobility can be liberating and enlivening, but it also comes at a cost. It means we have to figure out how to create connections from scratch. And the communities that incorporate and, and welcome newcomers have to figure out how do we create connection and integration. So how can we adapt to meet our need for connection in this migratory world? We might turn to technology to help us, like it helps us with so many things, but Technology, while it's done a great job helping us in increase the quantity of connections we're able to maintain, has generally, so far at least, eroded the quality. And when it comes to meeting our basic human need for relatedness, it's the depth, not breadth, of connection that counts. So if it's not technology, what is it? How can we actually create connection consciously? Given my nomadic childhood and also my nomadic adulthood. Uh, in a sense, it's a question I've been living with my whole life. But the inquiry began in earnest uh, when, with an incident that happened several years ago when I was living in Dubai. I was, for a period of several months, really caught in the quagmire of loneliness. I was facing a deep struggle in one of my close personal relationships, and despite a constellation of meaningful friendships, I still felt there was no one I could bring this struggle to. So I started withdrawing, retreating into myself, and pretty soon I was living several inches below the surface. I managed to numb the loneliness with a lot of work and 
a lot of delicious food, uh, and soldier on uh, through the weeks and months, keeping up appearances, but generally stuck in survival mode. Until one day, I had a chance encounter that sparked a question that I've been exploring ever since in my life and in my PhD research. I'd been out running errands, a bit on autopilot, and I hailed a taxi home. The driver asked me, uh, should he take Sheikh Zayed Road or Al Wasl Road? And I could tell from his accent that probably his native language was Pashto, because previously I had lived in Pakistan and most of my friends there were Patans. So hearing the sounds of the language evoked these warm and affectionate associations, and I felt compelled to try one of the phrases I had learned. So when he asked me my preference, I said, Singache sa huachawi, which basically means whatever you want. At first he was silent and stared at me. And then he burst out laughing. I was mortified until I realized he was laughing in sheer delight. My friends won't believe it, he kept saying. He asked me about my time in Pakistan and I asked him about his family, his time in Dubai. And 10 brief minutes later, we pulled up in front of my building. I took 20 dirhams from my pocket for the fare, but he refused which is not uncommon culturally as a gesture of politeness, so I insisted once, twice, three times. But he called me sister and told me I had made his day. So I thanked him and waved goodbye. And as I walked into my building, I felt full and energized. And I marveled at how completely transformed my inner state had been in the span of just a few minutes with a stranger I would surely never see again. So do we just have to wait for serendipity to strike? Or can we actually do something to consciously create and cultivate connection? I'd like to share with you today what I've found so far in my research on this question and why I believe that one solution to loneliness lies in starting a conversation about a new kind of creativity. Traditionally, we think about creativity in two types. Artistic creativity, where we craft something beautiful, or intellectual creativity, where we generate a new idea or a solution to a problem. But over the course of my research, I found something really interesting, something that changed the way I thought about creativity. See, creativity isn't what we do, it's how we do it. Think about it. You could paint a portrait in a more creative or a less creative way. You could come up with a new business idea in a more creative or a less creative way. So could we take the principles of this creative way and apply it to our interactions with other people? Could we somehow show up in a more creative or a less creative way? So I'm proposing that we can meaningfully speak about a third kind of creativity, relational creativity, where what we create is meaningful connection. So what actually comprises this creative way? I've distilled four elements, and I'm calling them cave for short, as in creating connection requires coming out of our caves. So C is for curiosity. Curiosity involves an inherent openness to experience, a willingness to admit that we don't already know the answer. As a recovering know-it-all, I have to admit this one can be a little tricky for me at times. Uh, but in any interaction, we can ask ourselves, Am I coming from a place of curiosity about what life is like for this person in front of me? Or am I trying to control the outcome of the conversation, push my agenda, or manage their perception of me? To activate curiosity, we can think about seeing question crafting as a creative act. Could you challenge yourself to ask someone a question today that they've never heard before, one you're genuinely interested to know the answer to? A is for appreciation. Research tells us that generally, we like people who are like us. So when we want to connect, we typically get the advice, find something you have in common. In and of itself, this common ground approach isn't a problem. But if it comes at the cost of downplaying our differences, then we're severely constraining our ability to connect. Creativity requires that we suspend judgment of what's new and different, and more so that we actually find a way to value a fresh perspective. When we can appreciate a way in which someone is different from us, it establishes a tone of psychological safety so they can show up without the fear of being judged. To activate appreciation, 
try to put your finger on a virtue of theirs that you value. Even if you don't express it explicitly, just bringing it to mind will help them feel more at ease. V is for vulnerability. There is simply no creativity without vulnerability. Proposing something new and different is inherently risky. Will they judge me? Will they laugh at me? But we have to get over it. And similarly, creating connection requires that we be willing to show up as our real selves and be seen as we are. Activating vulnerability can be as simple as sharing a story. It could be a story, a story of suffering and struggle, or it could be a story of celebration. As long as it's meaningful to you, odds are you'll create connection. Finally, E is for engagement. If we're too busy, stressed, tired, or exhausted, or absorbed in our phones, we're going to find it almost impossible to be creative. Could we dial down the distractions buzzing in the back of our mind and enhance the focus on this fleeting, idiosyncratic opportunity to connect? For some of you, you're naturally creative in this way. But for the rest of us, it's all too easy to be uncreative. If we fall asleep at the wheel and doze off into default mode, our interactions become scripted, shallow, and unsatisfying. But in any interaction, we can ask ourselves, could I be a bit more curious, a bit more appreciative, a bit more vulnerable, or a bit more engaged? And finally, I'd like to say something about creativity. We've inherited an impoverished definition of creativity, one that says that only those with exceptional artistic talent or uniquely inventive minds can qualify as creative. But creativity isn't what you do, it's how you do it. And we can start to see our interactions with other people, our relationships, as a domain of creativity. And this kind of relational creativity is accessible to all of us. Thank you.